Hello everyone and welcome back. In this session, we are going to observe different representations of floating point numbers. So, without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the outcome of today's session, today we will first observe the representations of binary floating point numbers first. Thereafter, we will acquire the understanding of the need of normalization. And finally, we will understand the biasing technique of exponents. So, let's begin with floating point representations. Now, in the previous session, we have already seen that the binary equivalent of this decimal floating point, that is 5.625, is 101 radix point 101. Now, in the early days of computation, this particular value would have been saved in the computer's memory like this. That is, first we are going to keep the entire number without the radix point. Thereafter, we are going to set this offset 3. Now, what is this 3? This actually means that the radix point is present after the third bit from MSB. So, basically this 3 represents the third bit from MSB. Observe, the radix point is present after this bit, right? And the position of this is actually 3 from here, that is 1, 2 and 3. Now, during implementation, this method proved to be very impractical. So, we actually moved on to a new method. So, let's try to understand that method first. Now, if you notice, this decimal value 5.625 can be represented like this, that is 0 0.5625 multiplied by 10 raised to the power 1. Now, basically what we did in here, we moved the decimal point to the left of the number. And since in this particular case, we moved the decimal point just to the left of one digit, that's why we are having the power as 1. Now, this entire portion after the decimal point is called the mantissa. And the power of the base 10 is known as the exponent. Similarly, for the binary value 101 radix point 101, if we perform the same drill, that is, if we bring the radix point to the left of the number, observe, here we have moved the radix point 3 bit places, right? And therefore, the power of 2 will be 3. And similar to this representation, here also, the portion after the radix point will be known as mantissa. And the power of the base 2 will be known as the exponent. Now, this information will be saved in a fixed bit memory space like this, where the first bit will be used for sign, thereafter some bits will be used for the exponent, and finally some more bits will be dedicated for the mentee portion. But before we save this information in here, we actually need to understand the need of normalization. Now, why is so? Because if you observe, the representation of mantissa and exponent can be done in different ways. Like in this case, we have shifted the radix point towards the left. And that is why the power of 2 is 3. Correct? Similarly, if we shift the radix point just two digits place, in that case, the representation will be like this and the power will be set to 2. Similarly, if we represent this as this, observe, here we have shifted the radix point 4 bit places and that is why the power is set as 4. Similarly, this can also be represented as this. Here, we completely got rid of the radix point and in order to do so, we had to place the radix point to the end of the number. Basically, we moved the radix point 3 bits towards the right and that is why the power of 2 is set as minus 3. Like this, there can be so many different representations leading towards confusion. And that is why we need normalization. Now, what is normalization? There are actually two types of it. The first one we call is explicit normalization. And here, we are to move the radix point to the left-hand side of the most significant one in the bit sequence. Let me illustrate. Say this is our number which we are going to normalize in explicit normalization form. Now, if you observe, we are to move the radix point to the left-hand side of the most significant one. Here, this is the most significant one. So, we are going to move the radix point to the left hand side of it. So, basically, our mantissa will become like this. Now, in order to represent this as this, how many bits did we move the radix point towards the left? It is 3, didn't we? So, this is the explicit normalization. Now, coming to the second one, that is the implicit normalization. Here, we are supposed to move the radix point to the right hand side of the most significant one in the bit sequence. So basically, this particular value, if we represent it using implicit normalization, the mantissa will look something like this. Observe, 
This is the most significant one in the bit sequence and we are to move the radix point to the right hand side of it. So that is what we did. Now in doing so, we had to move the radix point two bits towards the left and that is the reason why the power of two will be set as two. So this is implicit normalization. Although we have two different types of normalizations among explicit and implicit normalization, implicit normalization is the better one with respect to precision. Now why is that? We will learn that in the next session. Let's try to understand the biasing technique now. Now we just have seen we are going to store our binary value in a fixed memory space like this, where the first bit will be dedicated for the sign of the entire number, thereafter there will be some bits dedicated for the exponent portion and finally the remaining bit portion will be given for mantisa. Now for the entire number, this bit will represent the sign. However, a couple of moments earlier, while understanding the need of normalization, we observed that the exponent can also be signed, right? So the question is, how we are going to represent the exponents? You might be wondering, is it two's complement? But if you remember, during the session representation of signed and unsigned numbers, we observed that the two's complement representations are represented like this. Basically, the sequential patterns represent the values 0 to positive 7 first, thereafter they start representing minus 8 till minus 1. Basically what I am trying to say is, these sequential patterns, they don't represent the values sequentially. That is, the magnitude don't start from minus 8 till positive 7. And due to this reason, we can't really use 2's complement representation. Rather, we go for biasing. Now suppose 4 bits are dedicated for the exponent portion, now using 4 bits, in 2's complement we can represent the range starting from minus 8, minus 7, minus 6 up until positive 7. Now since our comparators cannot handle signed and unsigned numbers both, basically they only work with unsigned numbers, we need to represent this particular range using unsigned numbers. So what we will do, we will try to find out the maximum value represented in this particular range irrespective of the sign. Now without considering the sign, if you observe, the maximum value represented by this particular range is 8, right? So we are going to add 8 with all these values. Observe, this time minus 8 will now become 0, minus 7 will become 1, similarly minus 6 will become 2, minus 5 plus 8 will become 3, minus 4 adding with 8 will become 4, and finally 7 after being added with 8 will become 15. Observe, adding the maximum value to all the values of the range, we converted the range into an unsigned form. And since 8 is being added with every possible values in the range, that is why here the exponent is called xs8. Now let's observe how the values are actually saved in the memory. So with this particular one, we will observe the explicit normalization form. And for this one, we will implement the implicit normalization form. So let's begin with the first one. Now in explicit normalization form, this will be represented like this. Observe, we are supposed to move the radix point to the left hand side of the first one in the bit sequence. And in order to do so, we actually have to move the radix point one bit's place towards the right. And that will be the reason why the power of 2 is set as minus 1. Now let's observe how this will be saved in that 10 bit fixed memory space. Now in these 10 bits, the first bit place will be dedicated for sign. Thereafter, the next 4 bits are going to be dedicated for exponent. Now why is so? Because using 4 bits, we are representing the range minus 8 to 7 using the unsigned form 0 to 15. So basically 0 will be represented as 4 zeros and 15 is going to be represented using 4 ones. And that's the reason for exponent we are dedicating these 4 bits. Finally, the remaining 5 bits will be dedicated for mantisa. Now since it is a positive number, therefore the sign bit is going to be stored as 0. Now coming to the exponent, it is minus 1. Now in our bias chart, observe, minus 1 is 7. Now in 7 in 4 bit binary is going to be 0 triple 1. Therefore in the 4 bit exponent space, we are going to save the value 0 triple 1. Now coming to the mantisa, observe, we have the bits 1 0 1 placed after radix point. Therefore, we are going to store 101 in here. Now, what about these remaining two bits? If you remember, after the radix point, in any number system, we can place any number of zeros after the number, right? 
Keeping that concept in mind, we are going to fill these two places with zeros. So this is how the value 0 0.0101 is going to be saved in the memory using explicit normalization method. Let's focus on the implicit normalization now. So 101 radix point 101, if represented in implicit normalization form, it will be represented like this. Remember, we are supposed to place the radix point to the right hand side of the first one in the bit sequence. And in order to do so, we move the radix point two bits towards the left. And that will be the reason why the power of two will be set as two. So basically, this is the implicit normalization of this value. Now let's observe how this is going to be stored in this particular 10 bit memory space. Since this is a positive number, similar to the previous one, here also the sign bit will be zero. Now coming to the exponent, it is two. Now in our bias chart, observe, 2 is 10 and 10 in binary is 1010. So our exponent field will have the value 1010. Now coming to the mantissa, observe, after the radix point, the bits are 01101. So we are going to save that in this particular field. So this is how this particular value 101 radix point 101 will be saved in the 10 bit memory space using implicit normalization method. Let's now learn about the formula using which we can convert the value stored in the memory space back to human readable form. Coming to explicit normalization, the formula is something like this. So basically, if the sign bit is 0, then anything to the power 0 will result in 1, making the entire number as a positive number. However, if the sign bit is 1, this will result in minus 1. And therefore, the entire number is going to be a negative number. Now, if you remember, in case of explicit normalization form, we are supposed to keep the radix point to the left hand side of the most significant one. And that is why after zero point, we will take the entire mantissa, which is stored in the computer's memory. Now, coming to the exponent, we will keep it as two raised to the power exponent minus bias, because the way we have saved the exponent currently is not its correct value. For that, we need to take the exponent, which is saved in the memory space, and thereafter, we need to reduce the bias from it, right? And this is how we will get the entire value in human readable form again. Now, in case of implicit normalization, the entire thing will be exactly the same as explicit normalization with just one difference that is in that mantissa part. Because if you remember, in case of implicit normalization, we were placing the radix point to the right hand side of the most significant one. So using these two formula, we can get back the data which we saved in the computer's memory back to human readable form. So in this session, we observed the representations of binary floating point numbers first. Thereafter, we acquired the understanding that why we need normalization, basically in order to remove all the confusions. And finally, we acquired the understanding why biasing technique for exponent is needed. Do remember, this biasing technique is needed because our comparators can't handle the negative and positive numbers together. All right, people, that will be all for this session. In the next session, we are going to observe which of the normalization processes is better and why. So I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.